So before we start the main event today, I want to dedicate this video to I Am Secretly Your Mother. He is the latest Patreon over on my Patreon. Uh, I really appreciate his support, and a way to say thank you is I am dedicating names of my Patreons throughout Lumiere. And so, I Am Secretly Your Mother, you are the latest, and uh, really appreciate your support. And so this is my little way of just um, saying thank you for your support. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Hey guys, it's Dukon Red one and welcome to episode 19 of Chateau de Lumiere. Today we are going to be working on the chapel. One of the most historically important parts of medieval society is the church. Now we are not basing this off of the Catholic or even uh, realistic church. We are basing this off of more of a Game of Thrones type church around eight gods. And so we are going to be basing the design of this church off as such. Now we begin this design on a pretty Byzantine, very thick uh, stylization, but I decided, nah, don't want to do that. So we went ahead and uh, removed that. And now this is the design we actually end up going with. As you can see, we have a pretty solid apse there at the uh, front of the church here. We got the long, long tall windows and we got the rather um, extravagant and fragile architecture going on. Now, churches were one of those things where it would be rather frowned upon to be attacked. So while the architecture is rather um, fragile, it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things unless, unless if a heathen culture comes to try to conquer this, this uh, mansion, which I don't think will happen because this is rather deep in imperial territory. So we are now trying to work on some buttresses and we're still trying to uh, figure out the design. We add that cupola up top to give us a little bit of an extra jazz in this structure. Uh, I didn't want it to be just a flat roof up there. Now to the inside. Now this was a rather laborious process trying to figure out the uh, palette that I want to go to. So right now it looks like a complete mess. But eventually we actually, um, we, we really bring this together through the palette. Palette is like, everything guys I mean you got structural design that's a big thing too but when it comes to the grand scheme of things the palette that you choose is what's going to really make a difference so in here we go ahead and we work on the floors we're using block type to try to bring out the other complementary colors throughout and as you can see we're going for a very light and mid-tone slash regal look and so up here on the ceiling, um, usually when I think of ceilings and churches and uh, temples and such, I think of very colorful mosaics and just uh, maybe like little paintings up there. That's the idea with that. And then on the outside, we're using plaster and also those finials um, poking out of the sides to give it a little bit more of a uh, like reaching towards the heavens kind of look. So down here at the bottom, at the base, we need to start working on some nature. Uh, we had that clematis going up and just overall just trying to make it really green, vibrant, alive. That is the purpose of what we're doing right here. And I do believe that we somewhat um, achieve that goal. Uh, here we add a little knight's camp to give us a little bit of um, more allure, like kind of building into Lumiere because the uh, whole... Uh, event that's going on currently the wedding and the um, what do you call it the uh, tournament that is going on so now down into the undercroft down here this is going to be our place of um, building for a very long time but uh, <laughs> but we are down here for just a little bit we're going to be working on uh, this is the the room of the dead this is where they would be displayed also it's the shrine to Shorefus. So it's like a, a really neat little room, I thought. It's right directly under the chapel, underneath the main floor. So it has sort of a placement significance. Uh, and then over here, another little shrine to Shorefis um, in this little alcove. And then behind us, right here, is where the embalming room is, where people would be prepared for burial. So... Um, I don't really, I don't really make that room too big. I uh, have gotten comments to try to make a little window in the wall, and I do believe I might go and do that. Uh, we'll do that probably in the future when we start working on the Lord's Residence. So this is the um, the pathway leading down into the crypts down below Lumiere. Now you will notice a very significant style change right here. This is obviously not human architecture when we get down here. This is different. Uh, new architecture that uh, we have not seen yet. 
and in our next video I will show you guys and tell you guys what exactly is going on so stay tuned and uh, now let's do a little walkthrough and see what's going on by the way guys if you are interested in seeing the first person building of this chapel you can go ahead and check out the streams listed down below pretty much 95% of this chapel was built on stream so everything is recorded and you can easily just go ahead and click on any of those links um, around whichever part of the chapel that you are particularly interested in seeing being built and then uh, you can watch that and maybe you can learn something even more than what you uh, learned in say the time lapse or uh, whatnot but um, the only thing that I did not record is uh, really detailing in here like the uh, candles and just miscellaneous odd and end details to really spice up the chapel. Other than that, uh, everything is on stream and you can uh, easily just uh, click on those links and go over there and check it out. So yeah, now let's do our walkthrough. Alrighty guys, so here we are, the Chapel of Lumiere. Originally, I was thinking of more of a Byzantine design, but I think that what we have here turned out quite nicely. Now, the typical design for Lumiere is a mix between a French chateau design and a Gothic uh, design that you would find on uh, certain uh, Gothic churches and uh, just in general, just very ornate, spiky, and um, rather fragile looking architecture. Now, that definitely does not really make for a very good fortress, but good thing we're not building a fortress here. This is a fortified mansion, which is a huge difference. Um, so this would not withstand a very large siege, but I do think that it would be able to withstand small attacks and be able to uh, successfully repel them as well because it does have its qualities uh, in defense. Now one thing I, I want to really point out in the chapel and something that I really like is this cupola up top. Uh, one, it adds a really neat little light source inside and number two, the spire really adds a whole lot more uh, depth to the overall balance of the build. Having uh, things like that, like the spires at the top of the feast hall roof, um, you know, the spikes on top of the gatehouse, and the towers, even the middle um, bell tower. The spikes really make a difference and um, we don't want to do the same thing everywhere. So like we don't just want to have these spikes. And so having like little odd and end uh, cupolas like this, I believe really has its unique um, qualities and making the build look so much more interesting. Another thing I want to bring up is the apse here and with this little bit of a cone roof here at the top. This isn't actually a cone, it's supposed to be like a, uh, it's just like a rounded roof. I don't know, you, I'm terrible with coming up with, the, with uh, the names for this stuff. But yeah, that's that's what that is. Um, and it covers the apse here. Now the apse, the uh, design is supposed to make you feel like you are in the presence of the gods. It's supposed to uh, just make you feel rather small, as we will see on the inside. Uh, it just makes you feel like you are somewhat, um, you know, small in the grand scheme of things. And this chapel, according to the lore of Lumiere, was built um, after the uh, Lumiere was founded. Um, and so what happened is in order to celebrate the gods, um, the it was I think Yorn Bastalone. Uh, I will release the lore eventually, but I don't want to release it yet as it is unfinished. But anyways, Yorn built this uh, in a way to celebrate uh, a victory he had made uh, in the progress of Lumiere, and so uh, yeah, this used to be the Lord's residence. So that's why the style is somewhat different, as you can tell. It does follow the main uh, idea of the overall style of Lumiere, but it does have its own uniqueness to it. And so um, that is something that I really wanted to try to get forth there or uh, say there. Um, now, before we actually go inside, I want to kind of show a few things on the outside. As you can see, we really kind of um, filled in the region here with a lot of uh, greenery and just miscellaneous things. The uh, clematis vine creeping up the side of the building. I believe that adds a lot of depth. Um, greenery is typically one of those things that just is absolutely, um, you know, a fantastic way to um, increase the depth values of your builds and just make it so much more interesting. We have a poor knight camp here. Um, as you can see, he uh, dons uh, leather armor and such, so he doesn't really have one of those fancy tents as the uh, more notable knights would have, but he still has a nice little camp there in order to um, 
participate in the tourney. Now in here, I don't even know what this is, but apparently some um, some guy was buried here, and uh, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. But yeah, a little secret tomb underneath the hill there, underneath the shrine. So maybe there is some way to um, uh, you know combine the two and make it seem like you know that shrine is there because of that tomb but uh, nobody knows the tomb is there except for you guys well now that's everybody but anyways um, up here we went ahead and just added a little kind of roof uh, I don't even know why it's there it's just something to add a little something in between the buildings instead of making it just like a, a canyon I felt like having a little roof there just was a nice little addition and uh, so that is that. We'll take a quick look at the windows here. As you can see, we use a lot of depth. Um, we use three layers of depth. Uh, another thing I really wanna make sure you guys are aware of, look how many layers there are in the foundation here. We have one for the inner wall, two for the middle, and three. So we have three layers to work with, and that gives the opportunity to add so much more depth, detail, and just overall interest into the stylization of our build. Now in here, we only have about one and a half layers. So this wall is very fragile. So if there was an enemy attacking, um, it would be probably the smartest place to attack. However, uh, in the lore, it's very um, frowned upon to attack any, any kind of religious building. Uh, so if it's, like, at least if it's in the Imperials or um, you know people that believe in the same faith, uh, there's probably not really much worry for the chapel to be attacked. So, as you can see, that's the cupola up there where the light would be let in from uh, up above. And then we have, this is the Lord's balcony. So the Lord and his family, this is where they would worship um, a little higher up and they just kind of relax. This would be a place of peace and uh, just overall serenity uh, in the castle, a place of quiet. Um, and then down here we have the representations of all the gods in the lore. Um, so we have Bentens, the merchant, Laris, the maiden, Herelia, the mountain. We have Xanthos, the great. Um, he is pretty much the god king, the equivalent of Zeus. We have Otar, the warrior. We have Uduna, the shadow, and Victorum, the kraken. Now, yes, that is very close to the um, Game of Thrones lore, and that is where I got the idea from. So I'm not going to claim that it's anything original. But it is something that I thought was a good idea, and it uh, pretty much it suits the lore quite well. So we have some seating arrangements kind of sitting around in certain areas. A couple, uh, I guess, cauldrons of holy water where they could wash their faces and see their ugly mugs uh, in the mirrors. Uh, we have some kind of armor here. I'm going to just say it's probably something ceremonial, something that uh, maybe the Lord of Bastion, the original Lord, uh, maybe uh, like this was his... His, um, uh, his banner armor or something, uh, who knows, but uh, just something that they would probably consider a saint, uh, I don't know, just, just something along those sorts. As you can see, we got some uh, depictions of warriors behind, so it could possibly be relating to something, um, something more, uh, I guess, religious in that regard. Uh, we are in a temple, by the way, <laughs> or not a temple, a chapel. But anyways, um, as you can see, the colors and the vibrance of the windows really brings out the overall feel I'm trying to go for here. We have the very um, strong support structure here and uh, the chandelier in the middle, which, by the way, is accessed from over here. Um, so you would basically um, utilize that and it would lower the chandelier so that you could change out the candles whenever that need be. Um, not sure what else to say on the apps other than it uh, very colorful, very bright. That's what my intended design was. And then we have up here the mosaic and very colorful ceiling. I'm not sure if you guys have ever been in a medieval church. I have not, but um, typically when I think of a medieval, like a chapel, uh, I think of a lot of color because color is one of those things that's a very rich and um, uh, a very uh, unusual thing. And it's something that would be particularly brought out in religious places because only the best for uh, the gods, uh, at least in how I am, uh, how I know or how I uh, am aware. And so we have all that color and it really brings out the design, a very colorful floor pattern uh, with all those tiles and things. Again, some more seating arrangements here. And then this is here. This here is where the head priest would be. 
um, more of like just laying down, uh, kind of like, I'm not sure if you guys have seen depictions of Romans as they lay, lay down uh, in front of, uh, you know, along tables and things. That's kind of how I imagine it in here, and he has like books and things that he can read, because uh, it would be kind of annoying just sitting there the whole day, but um, that's what he does. Um, his office or his place of living will be down here underneath the Lord's residence. It will be rather ornate eventually um, and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm flying around really quick making sure I'm not missing anything. This doesn't really have any significance right here that I know of, but uh, it just is like a monument of some kind of religious significance. A couple bushes in here and I would say, yeah, that's pretty much it. So now we're going to head down. Down here, uh, we have the, uh, the, basically the undercroft or the sanctum of Lumayer. Um, now this here is actually the shrine to Shorifis. Shorifis is uh, the god of the afterlife. Now no, he's not evil. He's uh, the god of safe passage. Um, I kind of depict him as some kind of like weird creature that has four arms and weapons in each and it fights off the, uh, the demons or demons in the afterlife. Um, and so what they do is they pray to Shorefis in order to uh, provide the pilgrims in the afterlife um, safe passage through the plains uh, to the um, place of, uh, you know, I guess perfection where they are trying to get to. This right here is where the bodies would be displayed. Got the idea from Game of Thrones when the uh, kings would be displayed in uh, the midst of Baylor's chapel, um, Baylor's church, whatever that was called. And uh, just kind of they would be laying down here and then people could come down here and uh, pray over the body before it is uh, put down into the crypts. This here is a ceremonial um, crypt. Uh, at least I don't really have a solid purpose for it. I just thought it was a neat thing to add some kind of like protected type of uh, crypt down here. So if you guys have an idea of what else, I mean, what that could be used for, uh, let me know. That'd be uh, cool. Uh, a little fireplace down here to keep things warm. Uh, it would also probably keep the floor of the chapel warm. Uh, so that's just a neat little thing to think about. Um, over here we have an embalming room where bodies would be prepared for burial. Uh, basically their guts would be taken out and then they'd be stuffed with something. Uh, the, you know, a little bucket for the guts and whatnot. Look up the process if you guys really are interested in learning more about that. But that is where they would be probably mummified and prepared. So we have a uh, little entrance heading down here. So this is a like a, a human type um, walkway. And then it leads down and you, all of a sudden you notice a style change. Yes, that is very much intended. Um, before Lumaire was here, there was an elven temple or an elven type um, structure, uh, which we will get into more later in the series. And I'll give you guys a little bit more snippets of lore. But uh, at that time, this was the entrance down into the crypts. And so they blocked it up and then they filled in with dirt on the outside and made it so that it doesn't seem like there's anything there. But this leads down, down into the official crypts. Um, we will not be going down there today. That will be a following episode. And if you guys want to get caught up on that, you can watch my live streams over on uh, my live stream playlist. I'm sure you guys have been seeing those released here recently. Um, one, also you notice that this is like sort of under construction. Uh, maybe there's been a collapse or something. I'm kind of trying to say that through all of the uh, fallen stone and everything, the debris on the ground. And then over here, this is a secret um, exit for the king, or I'm sorry, not the king, the lord of Lumaire, if there is a, in the event of a siege. Now, the reason why I thought that this was a great side is this is the least likely place for an enemy to attack. Um, it's just solid walls. There really isn't any uh, weak point other than, I guess, the, the chapel side there. But then again, it's commonly... Um, it's like a common knowledge not to attack any religious uh, part of a of a, any yeah anything religious is like really frowned upon unless if you're like you know ancient you know Viking culture you know they didn't care they just kind of you know pillaged and everything and it was like really frowned upon like why do you attack a church um, if you guys have watched Vikings that's a great representation of what I'm trying to say um, but yeah, uh, there's work going on down there, and then we come back up here. So as you can see, I really tried to go for a very solid design while maintaining a fragile uh, look to it uh, to make sure that this build really has that overall just um, ornate 
and uh, you know, reaching towards the skies, chapel stylization that uh, you would come to commonly expect. So, um, anyways, that's pretty much the gist of the chapel here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button, comment below, and subscribe for more. We have more content on the way. Um, we're not going to be doing the Lord's Crypt next episode. The next episode will be half of the crypts down below underneath Lumiere. Uh, in fact, eh, I won't give you a sneak peek. I will not give you a sneak peek. No, I will not. Um, you guys will just have to wait to the next episode whenever I'm able to uh, release that. And um, we will have some fun there. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And uh, I will see you on the next one. Till then, uh, bye bye Thank <laughs> you.